My name is Monroe Bergdorf. You probably know me from being the first transgender model to model for L'Oreal, but also to be the first trans model to be sacked after a week. When I first really started working, it was around the transgender tipping point. Trans was starting to be seen as uncharted territory by the media. Caitlyn Jenner had just come out, Transparent had just kicked off. There was a very big interest in trans bodies. And obviously, because I work within the fashion industry and the makeup industry, there was that glamorous side. So I guess it was kind of the accessible version of a transgender person. In the beginning of my career, I was just hired on a tokenistic basis. I think that people wanted my look, but they didn't necessarily want what comes with it. And then when I started talking about race, I think people realized that, oh, okay, she's not really that accessible because race makes people feel uncomfortable. And then you see what happened with the L'Oreal thing. It just kind of blew up. I knew that the article was going to come out a day before it did because the Daily Mail contacted L'Oreal's publicist and then L'Oreal contacted me and then let me know the Daily Mail has been sent this post and it's a screenshot so it wasn't the full article, it was a screenshot of what you've said on Facebook and I was like okay yeah sure but I said this a month ago and it was in response to a terrorist act so of course I was impassioned, of course I was enraged, we should all be angry about terrorism. So of course I was annoyed because it was taken out of context and the screenshot that they had only showed a small part of what I actually said so it just made me look like I was having a rant. I felt really let down by L'Oreal that they didn't listen to me and that I explained how I felt and I explained why I wrote what I wrote. And also the fact that the campaign was celebrating diversity and celebrating women of all colours and it was a response to lack of diversity, lack of inclusivity within the beauty industry. I was acknowledging why there's lack of diversity and lack of inclusivity but then that's also why I was sacked. The response was probably the most difficult thing that I've had to deal with in my life to date. When it first broke, I was receiving countless amounts of abuse. It got to about 2,000 abusive comments every half an hour. I had death threats. I had people threatening to rape me, smash every window in my house. I had people contacting my employers to try and get me sacked. Um, I had to leave my full-time job because it became unworkable. It just kind of ruined my life for a good amount of time and forced me into a corner. It was just very, very difficult. I had to re-navigate my life, aspects of safety, aspects of privacy, aspects of even just like personal friendships. Everything just kind of changed. Some of the things I would do, just like being like a carefree person, I, I can't really do that anymore because I've got people knowing who I am and having a prejudged idea of who I am before they've even met me. But on the other hand, the support from a lot of women of colour have just really rallied around me. Also queer people of colour, the way that people just said no, this this isn't anything new. We all kind of feel like this. I think that people had a problem with me speaking about racism because I don't think necessarily people understand what racism in a modern day context is. White people who never experience racism, they are taught that racism is dead on just calling someone the N-word, being verbally abusive to somebody, which is just one little nuance of racism. There's so many different facets to racism and it's very very complex method of oppression. I just wanted white people to open up and try to understand how we feel rather than just say, nope, this doesn't exist. I've never seen this. We're living in an age where calling somebody racist is more offensive 
than actually being racist itself. People don't want to have their behaviour called out. If you've never experienced racism, you do kind of just need to take people of colour's life experience and word for it because this is happening and this has always been happening and up until now people have been scared to say anything. If you're speaking about your lived experience and speaking about oppression with relation to that lived experience and you have done nothing wrong, I think the main thing that I want people to take away from this is just not to be afraid to speak about racism, all people need to not be afraid. My hope for the world is just that we start to listen to each other. And also I want other girls to feel like they can make a difference. I just feel like we're in a real tipping point of women's voices. I think people are starting to realise, women especially, that the more of us that talk and realise that if we tap into that sisterhood, if we come together as women, then we can enact change.